Let me preface this video by acknowledging that the things I'm going to be saying in this video are based on a conglomeration of different people that I've talked with online and videos that I've seen and just a number of things that I've encountered since around 2017. It's the kind of response I would have liked to have given to a lot of this crap, but for whatever reason, didn't or couldn't do it. Often because, well, I sometimes get too emotionally worked up over an issue to have a reasonable response at that time. Anyway, people say, well, traditional views have worked in the past. It built society. Well, sure, yeah, it, it did do that. However, it also made things really shitty for minorities and women. There's no getting around that. But it was the time they were living in. Yes, of course. And those times were shown. We've, we've learned in time that, hey, yeah, the way that we used to do things kind of sucked for minorities and women. No, we shouldn't call those people bigoted for having lived according to the norms at the time. And I'm sure that there's a number of people back then who were trying to make things better. And yes, I acknowledge that Christian white men had to take responsibility for a lot of things. That's a lot of responsibility on their shoulders. At the same time, they were in control. They were in charge. They were the ones making virtually all the important decisions. And overall, old Christian white males are still making most of the important decisions. And I understand that there's nuance and there's a bunch of reasons for this, and there's a lot that can go into it, it can be complicated, and I also get that we can't demographically try to balance this all out with quotas and have anything that's worthwhile. That's not going to give us any good results. I get it. I'm not arguing for quotas. These traditional viewpoints that I speak of had a number of very unfortunate elements. Viewpoints that women are expected to be the nurturers, that they should essentially be subservient to men that they should be docile. Viewpoints that sexuality should be all about creating children and raising families, and that anything else is degeneracy. Viewpoints that IQ scores and stereotypical assumptions about people's intelligence based on race should be deciding factors on how we treat people. Look, if you want to live that way in a more traditional manner, and you find someone who you want to spend the rest of your life with who meshes with your way of wanting to live, have at it. But don't push this notion that your way should be the default way for everyone, or that everyone should look up to your way, the notion that people should strive for your way, or that people who are on the shit end of your viewpoint stick should agree with your views. People generally aren't very receptive to viewpoints that go against their own demographic. No amount of explanation will change the fact that those types of viewpoints are usually oppressive to women and minorities. And sure, there are examples of people who cling to those kinds of beliefs and are kind of self-loathing, you know, because they feel pressure from traditionalists and religious dogma. But that suddenly doesn't make it non-oppressive. Just because Milo is flamboyant and out of the closet doesn't mean his religion doesn't oppress him. People want more choices and they don't want to be degraded for making different choices than the traditional ones. It's really that simple. If you degrade others for making different lifestyle choices than you, and for not following your traditions, you can't honestly expect them to be accepting of your traditional viewpoints and lifestyle choices, can you? Well, unfortunately, plenty of people do expect that. And they'll even declare that they're being oppressed in the process of explaining it. Those poor Christian white males, so oppressed. They can't say that women belong in the kitchen. Or that gay people are abominations. Or that all transgender people are mentally ill. Without social consequences. So, so oppressed. You can't say bigoted things without consequences. But it's my personally held religious beliefs. They're protected. 
No, you're not protected from social consequences of you stating hateful things. You know, if you want to have hateful beliefs that you declare as not hateful simply because it's part of your religion, yeah, just why not just keep that shit to yourself? There are a number of LGBT who have hateful beliefs towards cisgender straight white males. And straight people feel awful who are on the receiving end of it. So I'm sure you'd prefer that those people keep their hateful shit to themselves as well. Sometimes, to be civilized, you have to shut the fuck up. If you have hateful beliefs, why do you have to tell the world? Because your religion says you have to? Is that it? Because Trump makes you feel more comfortable being divisive? Is that it? Because it's considered edgy to do in this era. Is that it? And yes, I'm sure it's so oppressive to have to hear Happy Holidays instead of Merry Christmas. It's a sure sign of bigotry, right? And don't try to tell me that people don't get bent out of shape over Happy Holidays when we have Trump stating and tweeting about it all the time and a bunch of the Trumpites and religious folk agree with him on it. It's an attack on Christianity. No, it's just trying to be inclusive of other religions and other beliefs. It's funny how so many of the, the fundy Christians want special rights as religious people, but they don't want to give those rights to other religions. Funny how that works, isn't it? But yes, non-traditional people want inclusion. Why wouldn't they? And sure, they don't need unrealistic inclusion and representation. They don't need to be put up on a pedestal. But they certainly want inclusion. It doesn't hurt anything. Do some people take that too far? Absolutely. And I've talked about that in other videos. And many others have talked about it ad nauseum. So I don't feel the need to really state it here.